Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Gospel Reflection for this Monday in the fourth week of our Lenten journey. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we read from the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 43 to 54. Jesus left Samaria for Galilee. He himself had declared that there is no respect for a prophet in his own country. But on his arrival, the Galileans received him well. Having seen all that he had done at Jerusalem during the festival, which they too had attended. He went again to Cana in Galilee, where he changed the water into wine. Now there was a court official there whose son was ill at Capernaum. And hearing that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went and asked him, to come and cure his son as he was at the point of death. Jesus said, So you will not believe unless you see signs and portents. Sir, answered the official, come down before my child dies. Go home, said Jesus, your son will live. The man believed what Jesus had said and started on his way back. And while he was still on the journey back, his servants met him with the news that his boy was alive. He asked them when the boy had begun to recover. The fever left him yesterday, they said, at the seventh hour. The father realized that this was exactly the time when Jesus had said, your son will live. And he and all his household believed. This was the second sign given by Jesus on his return from Judea to Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. This story of the official son comes in three of the Gospels. Mark is the only one that leaves it out. And there are slight variations across the three Gospels. Here in John's account, it is the son of a court official, which fits the fact that Galilee in the time of Jesus, was ruled by Herod Antipas, who boasted an extensive court. It was for their entertainment, remember, that he had John the Baptist beheaded. In Matthew and Luke's tradition, it is a centurion, possibly Roman, but more likely a Gentile mercenary. Luke stresses that he had earned the attention of Jesus by paying for the building of a synagogue. In each tradition, the official is the paradigm of Gentile faith in Jesus. At the end of the account of the cure of the boy, John mentions that this was the second sign given by Jesus. The first 12 chapters of John contain seven signs and are often known as the book of signs. For in John, the miracles of Jesus have a subtly different sense from that of other gospels. In the other gospels, the miracles show the beginning of the kingship of God, Jesus triumphing over, over disease, blindness, 
alienation and death. And so ushering in the kingship of God. In John, the miracles are often explicitly called signs. And they are signs of spiritual values and of Jesus' own glory. Thus, the first sign at Cana, the conversion of water, of Jewish purification, into wine, is a sign of the wedding feast of the Messiah, the joyful union of God with his people. Our present story in the Gospel today is the second sign, the gift of life. And in John, life always has at least the overtones of eternal life. For Jesus has come to give eternal life. So on our Lenten journey, we might ask ourselves, what do I need to do to have life? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me for our Gospel Reflection today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And until then, take care and God bless.